The Loop Browser allows you to have a single window that gives you quick and easy access to all of your loops. In the Loop Browser, you can search for audio files, use tags to categorize, audition the audio in the Open Projects tempo, and a whole lot more. Let's add some loops. Select Open Loop Browser from the Media menu. Navigate to the folder on your computer that contains all your loops using the browser on the left side of the Loop Browser. A list of loops will appear in the center section of the Loop Browser. Clicking on one of them will display it graphically below in the Scope window. Click the Start button to listen to the loop. The Play in Project context allows you to audition the loop in the project's tempo. This is handy if the loop you are auditioning has a different tempo than your project. If you have many loops, you can search for them using the search field. Once you have found the loop you like, drag and drop it into your project. If you haven't made an extra audio track for the loop, one will be created automatically for you. Rename the new track to Loop 1. Now that we have our loop, let's copy it so that it extends to the end of the song. The repeat command will work best for this. Choose Repeat from the edit menu. In the dialog that opens, choose how many copies you wish to make by increasing the count field. Click OK, and the repeat will be placed directly after the loop 13 times. We are now going to add one more loop. This time we'll use the Insert Into Project command. Create a new stereo audio track. Rename the track to Loop 2. Make sure this track is selected as Insert Into Project works using a selected track. Position the cursor where you would like the loop to be inserted. In our case, let's choose bar 9. In the Loop Browser, right-click on the loop you want and choose Insert Into Project to Cursor. This will drop the loop into the project page at bar 9 on the Loop 2 track. Use the Repeat command to repeat the loop out until the end of the song. That should give you a quick overview of the Loop Browser and its functions. Make sure you read up on the Loop Browser in the Operation Manual. We are now going to look at warping audio. Audio Warp allows you to effortlessly stretch or warp audio as you please. Here we have a drum beat that goes off tempo slightly. This could happen for many reasons. The drummer played off time, didn't play to a click, or the program that created the drum beat had tempo changes in it. We are going to make this drum beat follow a steady tempo. In fact, we will warp each beat until it lines up with the bars and beats of Cubase. Double-click on Audio Warp Drum Beat so that the Sample Editor window opens. Click on the Warp Samples tool. Zoom in very close to the beginning of the audio file. Our goal now is to move all the audio drum beats to the bars and beats of Cubase so that they line up. Click with the Warp Samples tool at the beginning of the drum hit, then move it towards a bar or beat in Cubase. You'll notice that a Warp tab is created. Do the same for every drum hit you see off beat. If you make a mistake, you can move the warp tab to any position by clicking on it in the time ruler. If you add too many warp tabs, you can erase them by clicking in the ruler area while holding down shift. After you are done, you should have a whole bunch of warp tabs that are actually warping your audio to fit the bars and beats of Cubase. So it doesn't matter how off your audio is, you can always warp it on time. Now let's do the same thing, but with hit points. This will speed up our process of warping the audio. Hit points can also be used for finding the groove of an audio file, slicing audio for Rex file type purposes, quantizing audio, and more. Double click on hit points drum beat so that the sample editor window opens. Right click near the top of the sample editor's title bar and deselect preview, view options, and selection controls. 
This will give us a little bit more room so we can see the hit point controls. Now select the hit point edit tool. This creates a whole bunch of hit points based on our drum beat. Move the hit point sensitivity slider so that there are just enough hit points as there are drum hits. Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac will allow you to draw in new hit points if the hit point sensitivity slider does not give you the right ones. To remove hit points, simply drag the hit points triangle upwards into the ruler area. Once you have the right amount of hit points, select Create Warp Tabs from Hit Points from the Real-Time Processing submenu under the Audio menu. Then click the Warp Samples tool to view all the Warp Tabs that were created. To remove all the hit points and only view Warp Tabs, select Remove Hit Points from the Hit Points submenu found under the Audio menu. At this point, you can now move the Warp Tabs to the bars and beats of Cubase, as we discussed in Audio Warp. After you're done, you should have a whole bunch of Warp Tabs that are actually warping your audio to fit the bars and beats of Cubase. So it doesn't matter how off time your audio is, you can always warp it on time.